welcome back. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the calculations needed for redox titrations. Now you're gonna practice a few of these in class. It is a core practical, so you're also gonna do a practical assessment on it. But you need to be able to do the calculations that surround these practicals. So you're going to need your notes and a calculator, and we're on page six. So the calculations for redox titrations, there are two main types of redox titrations you need to be aware of, and that is uh, reactions using manganate and the reactions using thiosulfate and iodine. So we're going to start with the potassium manganate titration. So this is a typical example. Uh, we've got some iron to sulfate, which is being oxidized by the potassium manganate. And we're going to try and find the concentration of the solution of iron to sulfate. So the first thing we need to do is to work out our balanced redox reaction. So we know we're oxidizing iron 2 to iron 3. So that's the first thing we're going to write down. So we've got iron 2 ions being oxidized to form iron three ions and this is oxidation so it's loss and it's loss of one electron. The next reaction we need is our oxidizing agent which obviously is being reduced so that's our manganate MnO4 minus and that is turning into Mn. Two plus this needs to be done in acidic solutions remember to get rid of the oxygens so I've got four oxygens so I need four oxygens this side which means I need eight hydrogen ions on this side to balance it. I'm going from a plus seven to a plus two, so it's a plus five electrons. And double check it by charge balancing that both sides add up to plus two. When I put the two equations together, remember it's the electrons that have to cancel. So this gives me my full redox equation of five Fe two plus plus my manganate which is that bright purple stuff, some acid, and I use sulfuric acid in this case, and I'm going to make an Mn2+, which is pretty much colourless, some water, and 5Fe3+. Now, as long as these two are quite low in concentration, they're going to be quite pale, so this will be what we call a self-indicating reaction, because this purple manganate is going to go to colourless. So the first drop of excess manganate will turn the whole thing purple. And the equation shows us, just as it does for an acid-base titration, the molar ratios. So for every one mole of manganate, I have five moles of iron. So in the next section, we're just going to work out the moles of potassium manganate. So moles, it's a nice lower sixth type question, moles is volume. Well, we had 22.40 as our average titra divided by a thousand times the concentration, which is 0 0.02, and that gets us 4.48 times 10 to the minus 4. We can use this to work out the number of moles of iron because we know it's uh, five times this value, so moles of Fe2 plus is five times my 4.48 times 10 to the minus four. So that is 2.24 times 10 to the minus three. We're, worked, uh, we're asked to work out the concentration. So the concentration is gonna be my moles, 2.24 times 10 to the minus three times by a thousand divided by my volume, which in this case was 25. So I get 0 0.0896 moles dm to the minus three. And that's my concentration. So on the next page is another couple of examples of these types of calculations. First one does have a tendency to catch students out. So you've got a solution of ethandioic acid and you've got a solution of potassium manganate. So we're going to work out the number of moles of these. So we know in terms of moles of manganate, MnO4 minus, we have volume 20 over a thousand times 0 0.01 so that becomes um, 2 times 10 to the minus 4 
and the moles of ethandioate, ethandioate is again volume, this time 25 over a thousand times 0 0.02. I think what, where this confuses students is it tends to work everything slightly backwards. So uh, we've got the moles here of my two species, which means we can actually work out the molar ratio. So the molar ratio of manganate MnO4 minus to ethandioate is a 2 to 5. Now in terms of equations we know the manganate equation so we know we've got MnO4 minus plus 8H positives plus 5E negative going to Mn2 plus plus 4H2O and we know that this equation is times by 2 because it's this molar ratio. So we know that actually it's 10 electrons that are being moved across. Okay, now we know what we start with, with the um, ethandioic acid, which is H2C2O4. We know that this is times by 5, and we know that it's moving 10 electrons. So one of the ways to think of this is we can look at this and we're going to look at the oxidation number of the carbon because the hydrogen and the oxygen are unlikely to change, but the carbon can have a variable oxidation state. So the oxidation number of the carbon here is going to be plus. So we've got four oxygens minus two, that's minus eight. We've got two hydrons, each of which are plus two, so that's plus six. And carbon, there's two of them, so it works out the oxidation number is plus three. Now, we know that this is being oxidized because the manganate is being reduced, so we know the oxidation number is going up. Well, the oxidation, maximum oxidation number of carbon tends to be plus four. And the easiest one to think of there would be CO2 because here the carbon has gone up to plus four. There are two of them because it's two on this side and we're just going to put in some uh, hydrogen ions and we get two H positives. That is moving two electrons. And we know that this one is times by five, so that matches with our molar ratio. Then we basically just have to put these two equations together and cancel things out. So the top reaction times by two, two MnO4 minus plus 16 H positives plus five H2C2O4 going to two Mn2 plus plus 8H2O plus 10 CO2 plus 10H positives. Obviously that H positives and those H positive cancel to give me six H positives on this side. The last example is a very typical exam question where you're given a uh, substance, in this case a steel nail, and you want to find out the percentage by mass of iron in that nail, or sometimes the percentage purity. The major things to watch on these ones is the dilution effect. Quite often students forget that bit. But like most calculations, you're going to read this one forwards, but work it backwards. So the first thing I'm going to start with is my balanced equation because I need that for my um, ratios. Now it's the same as the one in the uh, example number one, so I'm just going to write that out. So I've got MnO4 minus plus 8H positives plus 5Fe2 plus going to Mn2 plus plus 4H2O plus 5 Fe 3 plus. That manganate one's quite a useful one just to learn uh, because it comes up so often. So I've got moles of manganate, moles of MnO4 minus is my volume, 18.7 divided by 1,000 times by my concentration, 0 0.0105. So that is working out as 1.9 
six, three, five. You can keep these numbers in your calculator, but do write down some of them to the minus four moles. Okay, so moles of Fe two plus is going to be five times this number, 1.9635 times 10 to the minus four, and that equals 9.8. 175 times 10 to the minus 4 again. That's moles. But remember that's in 25 centimetres cubed. So moles of Fe2 plus in my 250, which is what it came out of, is going to be 10 times this. So I've got 9.8175 times 10 to the minus three in 250 centimeters cubed. So I can now find the mass of my iron, which is going to be my moles, 1875 times 10 to the minus three, times the RMM of iron, which is 55.8, and I get a mass of 0 0.5478 grams. So the percentage is 0 0.5478 divided by 2.47, and that also oh, times by 100 times the percentage, obviously, and that gets 22.2% to 3 sig fix. And that is my final answer.